Number one gives us some images of quadrilaterals in a plane, and then they are being dilated around um, this point above the plane by a scale factor between zero and one. So we're gonna match the dilation with the scale factor. Um, so kind of this smaller quadrilateral here is the dilated image. And we've got scale factors of one fourth, one half and three fourths. So I think we can pretty easily tell that dilation C is one half because it appears to be right in the middle of the dilated point and the original quadrilateral. And so when we take a look at these others, okay, so how much, what size is the new quadrilateral in comparison to the original? And so this one is a lot smaller than the original. So this is one fourth of the size versus this one's pretty close to the original. So this one is closer to a scale factor of one or this one's at three fourths. So three fourths, one fourth got pretty small, one half right in the middle. Number two, the pyramid um, in Egypt is the world's tallest freestanding structure for more than 3,500 years. Its original height was 144 meters. So let's locate that on the picture. So the original height was 144 meters. Its base um, is 231 meters. The diagram shows a cross section by dilating the base using the top of the pyramid as the center. And now this new cross sections base, um, or sorry, height is 96 meters. So they've given us the new height in comparison to the original height. And now they're asking us for the scale factor and then the new dimensions. So remember scale factor we'll get by doing the new over the original and make sure you compare um, similar things. So I'm gonna do height to height. I, I'm not gonna use the length here. So the new height is 96, the original height is 144. So this is our scale factor. Um, this simplifies down to two thirds. Then it wants us to know the um, dimensions of the new cross section. Okay, so to get the new dimensions of the cross section, you take the original and you multiply by the scale factor. So we'll take our um, original length of 231 and we will multiply by the scale factor of two thirds and this will give us 154 meters. So these new measurements here are each 154. Number three, a horizontal, the horizontal cross section of the figure are dilations from the bottom rectangle. So here's our bottom rectangle um, using some point up here as the center. What are the scale factors represented in this figure? Okay, so from this base up to this one, what scale factors would be represented if the dilation center is somewhere up here? So remember, when something stays the same, it's a scale factor of one. So when it doesn't change size, okay, it's a scale factor of one all the way to this point would be a scale factor of zero. So we don't go all the way to zero. So A and B would not work out. Okay, and then this one is saying scale factors between one half and three fourths, or sorry, one fourth and three fourths, or one half and one. And we know we go all the way back to the base at a scale factor of one, so D would be the one that would make sense. Number four, imagine an upright cone with its base resting on your desk, match each plane with the image of the cross section formed by intersecting um, that cone. So if we do a horizontal, so let me just draw a picture of a cone quick. So if we're gonna do a horizontal plane, okay? So if we're gonna cut it like this, we would end up with a circle, okay? So figure two would go with, um, with the horizontal plane. 
a vertical plane. So remember, vertical would be straight up and down. And then through the through the center point or that topmost point. And so like that is going to give us a triangle. Okay, so figure one, the triangle is produced by a vertical plane. And then the um, slanted plane is going to give us that oval. All right, in this one it says, what is the shape of a cross section formed by intersecting a cube with a vertical plane that passes through the opposite edges of the cube? Um, so we know that a cube, all of the sides are squares, so they're exactly the same shape on all sides. And so if we were going to do a cross section, a vertical cross section that would go from one side to the next like this, okay, we would get a square. And we know that because it would be the same shape as kind of this base or this size, or, sorry, this side. So same as kind of the base or the side that it's parallel to. Number six, sketch the solid of rotation formed by this given two-dimensional piece right here. So remember, solids of rotations are, um, you're going to rotate them, so they're going to be circular. And so I like to just kind of think about the circle drawn here. And remember that this length is going to be the same distance, okay, from here to this next point. And I just kind of like to think about drawing kind of those rotations on. And then that helps you get an idea of what the shape might look like. Um, but so then we get this and we can just kind of connect here. Um, but so then there would be your solid of rotation. Number seven, a rope with a length of four meters is tied to a stake in the ground and then the top of a tent, and it forms a 20 degree angle with the ground. How tall is the tent? So we can just sketch a picture here. We know the tent and the ground would be perpendicular. This angle formed by the rope in the ground was 20. The rope was four meters, and we want to find this height. And so we can use trig for this. So using this angle, this side here is the opposite side, and then the hypotenuse. So that's a sine function. So sine of 20 equals the opposite side, h, over the hypotenuse, 4. So then we could just multiply the 4 up, and then we would be doing 4 times the sine of 20, which would give us um, 1.37 for that height. And then this is in meters. All right, then number eight asks us to find the value of y. They give us these two angles. Remember, we would want to add those and make sure that they total to 90. And they do. That means that this leftover angle is 90 as well. So now we'll be able to do um, some trig here. So I'm going to just set this up in two ways. I'm going to use this 42 degree angle. If I use the 42 degree angle, then this Y is the adjacent side. And this 7 is the, oops, not the opposite, is the hypotenuse, which is opposite of the 90 degree angle. So this is the hypotenuse. And a cosine function connects the adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'll do cosine of 42 equals the adjacent y over the hypotenuse 7. So 7 times the cosine of 42 is going to give us y. And if we multiply that out, we end up with 5.2. So there's the length of y. Um, and then I'm just going to set up another function using this 48 as well. You don't have to do both. I'd just like to show you both. So if we use this angle, 48, then y is the opposite side, and then the 7 is still the hypotenuse. So then we can set up a sine function. So we would do sine of 48 equals y over 7. So then we'd be able to multiply the 7 up, 
and get seven times the sine of 48. Multiply that in our calculator and then again get 5.2. So either way, whichever one you would like to do.